عظم اللہ جورنا بمصبیبنا بالحسین علیہ السلام وجعلنا وإياكم من طالبين بصاله مع وليه الإمام المهدي من آل محمد عليه السلام اللهم لا نقتل الحسين وعولاد الحسين وأصحاب الحسين Brothers and sisters I've come and sat here I'm not sure I can manage this we come here on the day of Ashura in good numbers, more than most days in the masjid. We come here to listen to the lectures, to the master, to the marsia. But for some people, it is very, very personal. If you feel it personal, you will cry. You don't need somebody to make you cry. Your voice stutters. I'm not here to make you cry. It is up to you. If you want to cry, you will cry. If your heart feels it, you will cry. This is no ordinary day. This is the day of Hussein. Our second Imam said, La yawmuka, yawmuka. That means it is not an ordinary day. It's not just another day. It is a very different day. Not one of celebration. Of, well, immense, immensely pathetic, immensely sad what happened to the family of Rasulullah. The best of creation. Nowadays we see you see the first lady and the first gentleman of a country being given so much protocol. What happened to the first gentleman of Islam and his family? Nobody cared about in a desert, in a foreign land. He was desolate, desperate. People were out for his blood. For what reason? Because he wanted to be on the truth. That's the only reason. He didn't come out to battle, as Sayyid al Shahada said. He came out for the tabligh, for the islah of the community of his grandfather. It wasn't to fight, but people chose to fight because they couldn't handle his islah. They couldn't handle the truth of Islam. On this day, we commemorate and we remember so that we reinvigorate our Iman. We side with the truth, we speak the truth, we act on the truth. We don't be among the bystanders who comes in, who listens to somebody scream and cry and went out his heart, takes the tabaruk and goes away with no change in heart. May Allah protect us from that and may Allah guide us towards the correct path which Imam al Hussein alayhi salam which was his mission and that's what we are trying to do here I am just trying to put into words what I feel I just want to see and feel what his grandson Imam Mahdi alayhi salam is feeling today he says he's going to cry tears morning and evening till he cries tears of blood. For us, my dear brothers and sisters, it's okay. We cry in a majlis. We moan. We feel sad. We get tired. We go home. We sleep. And we come back again for a few days in a year. Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam. He's been doing that for nearly 1200 years. Put yourself in those shoes. Put yourself in those shoes. A person is crying for 1200 years nearly. We need to give Pursa to him. We need to pay our respects to Zahra Salaamu What happened on that day? Imam is saying, Salaam be on those 
cheeks which were smeared with blood. In Ziyarat Allah. Salam be on those people whose bodies were dismembered. Salam be on those past lips which were devoid of water for so many days. Salam be on the baby whose neck was cut away. Salam be on the ladies whose chadas were snatched away. Salam be on the child whose cheeks were slapped. How can we not cry for this? Even if we not cry for what happened, we cry with our Imam. He's present among us. He's present amongst us. He's shedding tears of blood. He's been crying morning and evening for years and years and years. I don't know what to say, Imam. I just give me permission to narrate what happened to your Jack. I'll only take a few minutes. I don't have the strength to go on to this. Imam Hussain is digging a grave with his own sword for his little baby. He is doing a Salatul Mayyad for his own child. There is nobody with him. He is desolate, he is desperate in a foreign land. But how is he doing the Salatul Mayyad? His hands and his face a smear the blood of his baby. He puts the baby in the grave. He cries out to the ladies, to his daughter Sakina, come and take my salam. This is the last time you will see me alive. I'm the only one left and I've got to go and fight the battle. They will not let me live alive. Imam Hussein says, salam to Lady Zainab. He says salam to Layla. He says salam to his daughter. They are all desperate, but they have nowhere to go. He is the last person who is going to be their protector. Imam goes to the battle on his horse. He's a fierce warrior. He goes and starts killing the enemies that come on his way. The soldiers scatter, but there are thousands and thousands of them. And he is alone. He is thirsty. He is hungry. How much strength does a man have? But he fights and fights. He is surrounded by enemy soldiers. Someone comes close and hurls a rock on his head. His forehead is shattered. His skull is broken. Blood is gushing from his forehead. He can't see anything anymore. He wipes away the blood. Soldiers surround him, arrows are flying on his body. Soldiers surround him with sword attacks. He falls onto the ground, but his body doesn't touch the ground. Why? Because his body is full of arrows. His body is full of arrows. The arrows prevent the body from hitting the ground. Soldiers still striking him when he's on the ground. He's having hundreds of wounds by soldiers from all around him. Lady Zerab watches from outside her tent. A little boy, 10 years old, Abdullah ibn Hassan, is holding the hand. He shrugs his hand away from Zerab and runs towards the battlefield, towards his uncle. Uncle, I will not let anybody kill you. He runs towards his uncle. Imam Hussein screams, oh Zerab, hold the boy. But the boy is far. He's run away to the battlefield. He comes to the lap of his uncle and he sees a soldier trying to attack him with another sword strike. He shouts the little boy, Oh son of a wicked woman, don't you try to kill my uncle. I will never let you do that. The man turns the attention towards the little boy. He strikes his sword on the hand of the little boy and his hand is severed. The boy screams and cries, oh, Uncle, look what they have done to me. <laughs> Imam Hussein says, My son, it's only a matter of seconds. You will meet your father very soon. And the soldier again strikes the little boy and an arrow comes and strikes the neck of Abdullah ibn Hassan and he passes away on the lap of his uncle. Another soldier strikes a spear on the shoulder of Imam Hussein. Umar ibn Saad shouts, put him away, put him out of his misery. Shimar 
who proceeds towards Imam Hussein. Lady Zainab runs towards the small hillock to see what's happening to his brother, to her brother. Shimmer proceeds to Hussein. He gets on top of his chest. He grabs hold of the beard of Imam Hussein. He pulls out his dagger. He starts striking Imam Hussein's neck. Fourteen times he strikes. Lady Zainab is watching from the hillock. She says, Ya Hussein! Ya Hussein! Ya Hussein! Ya Hussein! Ya Hussein!